All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual who is set to compete at BKFC 49, which goes August the 25th, and a very intriguing bout with Bryce Henry knuckling up and towing the line against Tom Schoaf, and always good getting to have Tom on the show to talk about these different fights. How's everything going there, man? Everything's been going real well on this side of the, uh, this side of the tracks, we'll say. Uh, I really got no complaints, man. Training's, training's going well, life's going well, and... Uh, Feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. Thanks for asking. Yeah, no worries, man. Always good to touch base and see how things are going. But I would have guessed you were feeling good, just even localized to the bare knuckle efforts, just with this being like the first go around of the calendar year and everything like that. Like, when did this bout offer initially come your way? I guess I'm curious to get the thoughts. I imagine you'd be excited with this being the first like bare knuckle foray of 2023. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, it's nice to be back. Um, we uh, so they called me a couple of months after. Uh, what did they call me? I want to say they wanted to get me back in April, actually, and uh, it was just too soon. I had taken too much damage from the last fight, so we pushed it back a little bit. Um, we started talking in uh, May about a June or July card. And then we finally got everything confirmed, I want to say, early July for the August card. And uh, I'm just excited to finally be back uh, back in, in, in the swing of things, man. It's been, a long, uh, it's been a long layoff, but that's pretty standard and typical for me. So, like I said, I'm just excited to be back in the gym and back to moving around and doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing. And, Ready to go out there and fight my last fight and call it a day. Oh, so is this like a send-off kind of fight for you then? Sorry if I misconstrued the last bit of what you said, but... No, I, so I, um, we have... Uh, I, I don't know, man, I guess the best way that I can describe it is uh, I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> I... Uh, I have decided not to renew contract with uh, with the BKFC, so this will be my last bare knuckle fight. Yeah. Well, I think that's huge, man. I feel like that's not really like something that's out there. Like, I feel like people, unless maybe I missed like a post you had you know put up in regards to it, but I feel like that's not really a known thing. I feel like that's huge news. No, I think you're probably the first person I've uh, told publicly. I. Uh, it's something that I've kind of been tossing around between uh, my manager and uh, my, uh, my 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 fight team, and it, I, I think it's uh, I think it's about that time, man. I think the long and the short of it is, you know, I got into it for a specific purpose, and I reached that purpose, and I wasn't good enough to uh, to maintain that purpose. So you know, on to the next one. Well, I mean, I think even in saying that, though, I mean, I imagine what you were alluding to was maybe wanting to cement yourself as a champion. But, I mean, how many fighters get to the point of even, you know, contending for gold just with your last one being for that BKFC lightweight title? I mean, you ended up fighting, like, the number one pound-for-pound -pound guy in the sport. So, I mean, I feel like you could definitely, like, look at what you've done and very much be proud at it and everything like that. Because, yeah, I mean, even contending for a title and getting to that point, fighting a guy of... Palomino's caliber is huge. Yeah, and I think that's exactly it, man. I uh, when I got into the sport, even in the MMA, when I first started fighting, um, it was never to be the best fighter. It was always to be a really good coach, to have a uh, a resume that I could stand on, so that when I wanted to be a coach, people would would understand that I've been there and I've done that, and. Uh, you know, like you said, when you be, when you fight for the world championship against the pound for pound number one guy in the world, um, it's kind of hard to get better than that outside of winning. And I didn't win, and, you know, and I'm okay with that. It doesn't bother me. Uh, but it, I, I do think that uh, I've, I've put my body through enough damage uh, to under, after I've already understood the fact that I'm not good enough to be the best. You know, it's like, all right, well, you know, let's go, let's go do another sport. <laughs> Yeah, and when you say that, I mean, I guess just making an inference from other sports I know you're involved in, like, would the path be to then, I guess, mostly prioritize submission grappling? Because I saw you had a black belt tourney 
a couple months ago, a few months ago. At this point, it looked like you did quite well. So is that kind of the path going forward? Like, is that the new sport, I guess? No, I really don't know. Um, we have a lot of really good high-level competitors here at my gym. And uh, I don't know if that's the direction that I'll go. Um, I just know that I, I don't want to... I don't want to hurt myself or others in the capacity that I've been doing over the last five years any longer. Um, so I don't know if I'll go to MMA. I don't know if I'll go to regular golf, boxing, or just, you know, sports, jiu-jitsu. I really don't have a clue. Um, I think I'm kind of in a, a turning over a new leaf portion of my life. And, uh, you know, may, may, maybe I do just settle down and turn into a coach. I, I, I genuinely don't know. I'm 34 years old, so I'm sure I haven't even reached my, my physical peak or prime yet. But uh, how I feel right now is that as far as the bare knuckle game goes, is I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm tired of it. The BKFC has, has taken the fight out of this dog. I mean, probably just, I mean, like you said, seasons of life, chapters of, you know, what you're going through. I mean, you've put over 15 years of time into martial arts overall. So even just like a, I guess, a differentiation of activities in life kind of thing, I would think that just even kind of doing that would stoke that a little bit, just like that diversity in your existence and all. Definitely, certainly could be. So yeah, so to answer your question, I'm not entirely sure what uh, what the next avenue is for me. I, uh, I got to get this... Uh... I got to close this chapter out first, and that takes place on August 25th. Yeah, for sure. And, you mean, just in talking about that next chapter here, like, what are your thoughts on just this opponent you have? Because from what I can tell, it looks like they've got some glove boxing experience as well as, you know, bare knuckle. Looks like they've got, like, a 6-0 and record with, like, the glove boxing and 2-0 and in bkfc like what are your i guess thoughts on the overall resume of your opponent i guess some of the better stylistic attributes bryce henry brings to the table i'm honestly not sure if i could have been given a more difficult fight for my 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 going away party um everybody knows that i have difficult with taller fighters and he's six foot four uh he's a naturally bigger fighter he used to fight at 165 pounds now he fights at 155 even though he says that's his natural weight class uh yeah he's undefeated in pro boxing at, the, at six and zero, oh, and he's undefeated in the bkfc at two and zero. Oh. and uh the two guys that he beat in the ufc one was a fairly high level mma fighter and the other one was was a pretty decent prospect in boxing. Um, he's crisp, he's talented, he's athletic. I really don't have anything bad to say about the guy. You know, watching his footage, everything looks looks clean and sharp. And you know, I, I, I think I think it'll be a very difficult uh, puzzle for me to figure out while I'm in there. But uh, I have faith in myself, man. I, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and yeah. It, even though he is 23 and he's, I'm sure, full of piss and vinegar, I'm 34, and like you said, I've been doing this for 16 years. And I've been doing this a long time, so I just have to go out there and play it smart, play it smooth, and take my time, and I'll find his weakness. I mean, I'm curious to get some thoughts on this, too, just you're talking about how this is, like, a difficult, like, stylistic matchup and, like, a body frame for you, and he's, like, more of a guy that had competed at 165, even prior to this like lightweight transition. And I mean, I've known you to get in that work with Jake Lindsay across like, I mean, a few camps at this point for sure. Like, is that something you're, I guess, especially doing like that focused work with to like replicate the body type and maybe have him mirror some of like Bryce Henry's skills or are you curating the camp like that at all? So my camp is entirely specified towards Bryce. That that's for sure. I mean, every fight has to be specified towards your opponent when you get to the high level organizations and the the high level competition. Uh, and the lower levels, everybody's pretty much generally doing the same thing. But at the higher levels, everybody does something a little bit different. Uh, I've been working a lot with actually my brother. Uh, my brother's six foot one, six foot two, uh, and he can box. So I've been doing a lot of work with him, getting it working uh, with him, and you know, getting sparring rounds in with him, and that's helped out quite a bit. Um, I'm trying to find more sparring partners, but it's hard to find people that are six foot four and know how to box. Uh, and then all of my, my knit work and my uh, my bag work and 
and all of the, the technical aspect of the things that I'm doing are all coming into play uh, for this fight just because I know that I'm going to have footwork. Or I know that I'm going to need to have footwork. Uh, I know my, my, my movement and my just my foot movement, my head movement have to improve quite a bit. Uh, I don't see myself standing still much during this fight. So, uh, yeah, we, I, I've been absolutely uh, implementing a Bryce Henry specific game plan for this fight, for sure. Yeah, and do you derive anything from, I guess, being able to be that guy to, you know, halt the momentum? Like, just even in the context of it being like, an impactful kind of swan song for you because we're talking about how he hasn't had that blemish across either glove boxing or bare knuckle boxing so would that like sort of add something to the swan song a little bit like galvanize an already strong kind of farewell moment or are you not even looking at it like that uh i think in a perfect world it would be a beautiful moment if i could go out there and have a flawless victory uh and, and you know Wave, wave goodbye and walk off into the sunset. Uh, I think that that is a foolish idea given the sport that I am in. Um, the likelihood of getting out of there unscathed is, uh, is slim to none, and the likelihood of winning is 50-50. So uh, my mentality on this is just really just kind of trying to go in there and do the best that I can do. Um, Give it, given you know what I have, uh, I know what he's bringing to the table. I think I know what he's bringing to the table, and I've got an idea of, of, of what I'm able to do. Um, I'm certainly not trying to uh, to lose this fight, but there's no misconception in my mind that it'll be an easy victory because I it won't be. Well, I mean, you've, you're a guy that I think has really like proven yourself in those like arduous kind of fights so i feel like if it even goes in that direction you already have like just the awareness and the history of having really taken yourself to those moments and like really yeah, dug deep it turns into a I, and that's that's really kind of the thing is like i don't want this to turn into a dog fight as i was talking about earlier i feel like i put my body through through enough uh over the last five years in this sport um I don't want this to turn into a dog fight, but uh, but yeah, if he wants to see who the bigger dog is, uh, he will lose that match. There's no way fans are butts about this. His best opportunity at victory is to make this a clean, technical, sharp boxing match because uh, that's where all of his experience is. Um, if he wants to make this ugly and turn this into a brawl, he will regret it. Because uh, as you said, we've we've already established that you have to you have to put me to sleep, or you have to scar my face to the point where the doctor has to step in and say, "No, this fight's over." Um, but I I don't think there's any doubt in anybody's mind who the bigger dog in this fight is. Uh, I think this fight's going to come down to who the more technical dog is. Yeah, that's almost like what I was kind of getting the sense of as you were kind of talking about it and everything. Have you seen anything maybe in some of his performances that could showcase a level of him being a dog? Because just even in some of his like BKFC fights, like it seems like he got like pretty emphatic finishes and everything like that. Like, do you think he even in the body of those fights maybe showed certain moments where you can tell that dog is in him, or do you think this fight will almost? Like provide him an opportunity to showcase like how much I guess temerity and I guess dog he does have in him. No, I can't say I've, I've seen that, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, after watching a handful of fights that I've watched of his, I've never seen him in there with anybody who truly has pushed him at a technical level we'll say like people can hit him he's not he's not infallible in the sense where like he doesn't get hit but he doesn't get hit to the point where he's so effective that he's got to fight back you know that he's got a he's got an uphill battle in front of him um and that may be a good thing that maybe maybe he's just so good at movement and defense that he just doesn't take those shots you know and, and he's just that slick or maybe he hasn't fought anybody who's really hit him uh, I genuinely don't know, but I can say that he's looked very impressive in all of his fights, and that, yeah, we haven't seen that moment where he's been put down or where he's been in a scary position.
position where he's been forced to battle back and prove that he can win. Um, I think the most nervous he's been, we'll call it, uh, was when, I can't remember the guy's name that he fought, but it was his first fight in the BKFC. And, uh, you know, he just looked tired. You know, the fourth and third, I should say, the uh, third and fourth round, he looked fatigued. He looked like he was moving a lot. And the guy just, you know, like typical MMA fighters, came forward with his face first and, you know, ran into a couple punches. And then in his last fight, I think he got a clean jab in. I think, uh, what was his name, Brian Wagner, or I think that was his name. You know, put a couple jabs in his eye and, you know, it couldn't go on and call it a day. Um, but, again, I don't think there was any dog in Brian either. So that's really tough, you know, tough way to answer it's a really tough question to answer without actually being in there with him um because if he can be hit he can be hurt but if he can't be hit well that's just that's just a totally different animal so yeah i mean i get what you're laying down for sure and i guess i'm kind of curious because earlier you were talking about more so like oh i've sustained like a certain amount of damage to my body where i kind of feel good to kind of move on but also very much the nature of the sport where as much as damage is sustained damage is also dealt and there's definitely been some big moments in that regard like I mean when you you know knocked that tooth out of you know Nathan Mitchell's mouth when you fought him or like even when you were fighting Palomino last and the damage was to the point where I was seeing in the post you were saying you could have even lost your eye I guess this is a bit of a broader question too but like has there been a moment in the ring either like damage you've sustained or I guess damage you've created in others that stands out as like maybe the most visceral, I don't want to say memorable because it's maybe not the right wording, but is there a certain like particularly like visceral moment of damage either sustained or dealt out that stands out across your bare knuckle fights? Yeah, I can think of two moments, uh, one from each position that stand out very vividly. Uh, and the first one is damage that I've done. Um, after I fought, uh, oh goodness, what was his name? Bruce Watch Medial. Uh, somebody sent me a post from his Instagram page, and he was in the hospital and uh, had to get a steel plate put in his face and had to have a bunch of surgery and wound up retiring from combat sports uh, because of that fight. Uh, so that really hurt my heart. And then uh, you just the, the the next fight. Um, you know, I got hit with that right hand by, uh, by Luis and he caught me essentially in my tear duct and just ripped the skin from my face. That was why the fight got stopped. It wasn't because the cut placement, it was because the severity of the cut, um, I was supposed to go see a plastic surgeon, uh, to get my face fixed after that, which I didn't do. <laughs> Uh, they don't pay me enough for that, but uh, but but that's the point. Is you know, yeah, I've experienced just because of the way that I fight. I mean, I don't think it's anything against the sport. You know, you can't blame the sport for the way I perform in the sport, but the way that I fight, I take damage, and uh, I can't continue to do that if I want to, you know, be able to have a future uh, in any way, shape, or form. So. That's that's th th that would be my my response to that is yeah I've 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 done damage to people that hurts my heart and I've taken damage from people and that hurts my heart as well and if I want any sort of le longevity past this sport I cannot continue to do this sport. Yeah, I definitely appreciate the depth of insights you gave me there. I didn't know Bruce Lutch Media outright <clears throat> retired from combat sports out of all of that though and I mean it's kind of curious because I was just kind of thinking the other day about like the pair of classic fights you had with Diego Garijo and I just actually noticed that he hadn't competed since then so I didn't know if that was maybe like a similar thing or because I remember at one point that seemed like almost like a, an inevitable rubber match there yeah yeah that was in talk for a long time uh but Diego for his own personal reasons and he made this known on like his instagram uh he posted conversations that he had had with matchmakers and stuff like that but essentially he wasn't he was in the same position that i was in um with a slightly different angle to it uh they wanted him they wanted to do the trilogy um but from what i gathered from the messages is they offered him less money than uh than the fights pre 
previously, so that was where that had had come about. But his main sticking point on it was, he's like, look, I went in here and I did battle with this guy twice, and the last time I had my face shattered, and uh, now you guys want to pay me less money to do it again. You know, that's outrageous. Uh, but I think his main concern besides the money was the fact that, you know, he wasn't getting paid for the risk that he was going through. And that's a pretty severe risk. You know, I don't know if anybody's seen that fight, but you see the, the, the swelling on that man's cheek and to, to assume he got out of anything unscathed is kind of silly. Yeah, that's just, I don't even really know what to say. That's wild that they were looking to even pay him a bit less than what was paid for some of the previous fights because I know there's like a crop of like more modern BKFC fans in the last like couple years who may not have seen those fights but for people who are like watching like really early on like I felt like those fights really helped like jettison the promotion in a big way like certainly helped like put them on the map so yeah no that's crazy yeah. yeah I'm really glad you said it because I've been saying it for a long time so it's nice to hear it come out of somebody else's mouth but yeah I feel like I've done a lot for this sport and I feel like uh, my 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 fights and my face uh, have have really kind of pushed, kept the ball moving for this company. Um, and that could just be my own ego or you know whatever. But no, I feel like that I have given them. I fought for this company eight times, and uh, I feel like they're probably eight of the best fights they've ever had. You know, win, lose, or draw, I come out and I perform. So. When you're not being paid for that, it hurts. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you always bring it every time you come out. I definitely think you're one of the more, like, action-oriented fighters, for sure. Like, I saw a headline ahead of, like, one of your last fights where you were talking about bringing Warshow to BKFC 34, and I'm like, I don't know that you haven't brought that to any of your previous fights, though. Could you say that one more time? You said you, you, you heard me say that I was going to bring what to the next fight? Oh, sorry, I just saw a headline before your previous fight saying you were going to bring Warshof to BKFC 34, and I was like, oh, I feel like we've seen that like pretty much every fight, though. But. Every time, absolutely, yeah, that's usually been uh, been pretty standard Tom Show performance, fight of the night performance, like that's, that's what I'm there to do, I was there to entertain the fans, I was there to put on a show regardless of the effect that it had on my body, and uh now I'm starting to consider the effects that it has on my body. So, so yeah, my mentality's changed a little bit. But uh, like we talked about earlier, you, you, you can take the dog from the fight, but you can't take the fight from the dog. So, yeah, if he wants to figure out who the bigger dog is, we can do that. Well, definitely a lot of intrigue heading into this one, man, and great getting to talk to you as always, but just in being mindful of your time and schedule, Tom, is there like a final parting thought you might want to add as we're wrapping up here, man? Um, honestly, I want to say thank you to, uh, to all fans out there who take the time out of their life to uh, show me some support. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Dylan, for having me on the show, man. Um, thanks to, uh, to my team, I really wouldn't be able to do this without them. And then uh, thanks uh, to my brother, you know, because he's been helping me so much with this camp. It's just been uh, out of control. And then I would say uh, last but most certainly not least, I would have to uh, thank the Lord because this has been uh, none of this would be possible without him. So that's all I got, man. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. And just in a much broader sense, thank you for, you know, all you've done for the sport of bare knuckle. Like I was saying before, you were one of the guys who was with the company from very early on. One of the more experienced guys got yourself in the rankings, fought for the title. Just a great run. And like I was saying, always exciting fights. And I feel like this Bryce Henry fight at BKFC 49 will very much, you know, be within that trend for sure. But you know, in saying that, very much excited for August 25th. But until then, Tom, you have a good rest of your day, man. And yeah, just, you know, thank you so much for the time and for the, you know, great career and best of luck with whatever might be next. Thank you for your kind words, man. I really appreciate that.